What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. And on today's video, we're gonna talk about some hacks to help you find joy in your exercise. Now, you might be thinking that, Matt, this is probably good for people just getting started on their exercise journey. Those people just starting to run, perhaps as a New Year's resolution. But at least for me, I like to find joy in my activities throughout the entire year. So we're gonna talk about a few hacks after I found an article in Well and Good. And the article is titled, Five Ways to Find Joy in Exercising If You Hate Working Out. Now, I hope none of you watching this channel hate working out. I highly doubt that's the case, but it's good to highlight extremes because if we are not at that extreme end of the spectrum of hating our runs, hating working out, then we're already ahead of the game. Oh, and like I said, I will be sharing with you the ones that I actually use. And if I'm gonna be sharing the ones that I actually use, I'll also share the ones that I don't use and perhaps I should incorporate. Oh, and this is also the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I wanna hear about your successes and I definitely wanna hear about those setbacks. Go ahead and drop a comment letting me know what you got up to last week. Okay, five hacks to find joy in your running. Let's get into it. So there was a recent study of 2,000 Americans and it was found that 50% of them don't like breaking a sweat. In fact, 34% of the 50% of people that don't like breaking a sweat said that they would rather hand wash their dishes for the rest of their life than actually go out and break a sweat. Some people even said that they would rather cancel their Netflix subscription for a year than break a sweat. And you and I both know that that's just crazy. But whether or not you like breaking a sweat doesn't really matter. Working out, running is vitally important to our health. It's gonna help us live longer. It's gonna make us happier. It's gonna make us sleep better. And even though I stopped at three examples, there are literally untold examples of the benefits that exercise and running has for you. So if you find trouble finding the joy in it and yet you know you have to do it, the first hack is to fake it till you make it. And this is pretty good advice in a lot of areas of life, but we're gonna keep it to running. And by faking it till you make it, there is usually that inflection point where it becomes a little more enjoyable. And you've heard the old adage that you never make a decision in the first smile of your run. And it's because when we start running, it normally doesn't feel so good. It doesn't feel as good as when we're fully warmed up and getting in the groove. So you fake it. You tell yourself, I love this. Perhaps smile. We all know that there have been studies that actually physically smiling releases endorphins and makes us feel better. Well, let's say, for example, you're going out for a 5k run and you really don't feel like it, but you know you have to, but you don't want to. Just tell yourself, I am going to run for 10 minutes. And if I still feel bad, I'm gonna stop then. You're faking it by giving your mind the idea that you have the opportunity to stop when in reality you don't because deep down you know you're gonna keep going after those 10 minutes. And if the worst comes to the worst and you do have to stop after 10 minutes, well then things are obviously pretty bad and you still got 10 minutes in. And that's why fake it till you make it is pretty good no matter what happens. Okay, the second hack to finding joy in your running is to set a schedule and stick to it. And this is vitally important, even for someone like me that actually quite enjoys running most of the time. I find that on the days that I work, when I have a set schedule and I know that I have to wake up and get out the door within a certain amount of time, I am much more efficient. Whereas if I don't have to go to work and I have all morning to get my run in, there is a lot more sipping coffee and playing on the internet and twiddling my thumbs and just gazing at my running shoes. What I'm saying is if I have too much time, a lot of nonsense goes on. So by setting a schedule and sticking to it, you're removing the chance to procrastinate and do other stuff. And also if it's not really your favorite thing to do, at least in the beginning, by setting that schedule and sticking to it, you're gonna get it over with quicker. And by getting it over with, I mean that first mile, that first 10 minutes or so of running before you start feeling good. And I promise you, once you get going and you get warmed up, you will feel better. So if you don't already do this, I want you to make a plan. And if you have a calendar, that's where it goes. And if you just use scrap pieces of paper, well, that also works. But just write down what you're gonna do on each day of the week and what time you're going to do it. Now guys, of course, our schedules change and that's totally fine, but just update your calendar with the new schedule so you know when you have to do your run or your weight session or your elliptical or whatever you wanna do, it goes on the calendar so you know that's the time that it has to be done. The third hack for finding joy in your run is to set out your clothes the night before because again, this is all about removing barriers. I set up my clothes the night before I run on the days that I go to work. So not only do I have a schedule that I have to stick to in order to get my workout in before I have to go to work, in order to meet that schedule, I have to set my clothes out so I'm not fumbling around in the dark, trying not to wake my wife. And it just removes that barrier of choosing what I'm gonna wear to go out for the run. When I go to bed, I know exactly what time I'm getting up. I know that I'm gonna leave the bedroom, put on the clothes that I've already set out, and I am that much closer to getting out the door. My friends, it works. I don't know if that's really a hack. Well, it is a hack. If you don't do it, it's a hack. If you already do it, it's just a habit. The fourth hack to finding joy in your running, and this is a good one. I, I actually really like this, at least in the beginning of a fitness or running journey, and that's not to do workouts that you don't like. This may be counterintuitive if you don't like running or if you don't like working out or if you don't like breaking a sweat. This isn't a get out of jail or get out of working out free card. You still have to do something, but I want you to do the stuff 
that you actually like. So as we are running focused here, let's talk about running. If you don't like doing intervals, don't do intervals. If you don't like doing recovery runs, don't do recovery runs. If you are struggling to find the joy in your activity, you have to remove those barriers of doing things that you don't like. And if, for example, you don't like training specifically for a race because you don't race, you don't have to. You can go out and just plod along and listen to your music and enjoy the run for what it is, which is you doing something good for yourself. Now, of course, a lot changes when we start focusing on a specific race, something that is in the future that we're working towards, because then we may have to do some workouts that we might not ordinarily like. Funny thing is, is that how I feel about these workouts are sort of counterintuitive. I do not look forward to doing my intervals and I don't look forward to doing my tempo runs. I do look forward to going out for an easy run. However, when I come back from intervals and when I come back from a tempo run, I feel really good. When I come back from an easy run, I can still feel kind of sluggish. And even though I know that my body feels better after I put in a hard effort, I still don't look forward to the work. Does that make sense? That's a bit weird, but it's true. Let me know in the comments if you feel the same way. Okay, the fifth hack to finding joy in your running or in your workouts, or pretty much in anything at all that you're not really a fan of in the beginning, and that's to turn your movement practice into a gratitude practice. And what you're doing here is turning your perspective. You're looking at it from another angle. And that angle is being grateful for what you can do. Being grateful, being able to move your body. Because if you are able to get out there and exercise and go for a run, knowing that you're gonna feel good for the rest of the day because you've done it, then my friends, you need to feel grateful for that movement. And if you can't feel grateful, put yourself in the position of someone that cannot do it. Even if you can't do that, put yourself in your own shoes when you are injured, or if there's been a time when you couldn't get out and run or work out. It is pretty miserable. And to be honest, I don't practice gratitude enough when I'm running. It's a very occasional thing when I actually have to remind myself. In fact, that could be something that I work on throughout 2023. So mark this right here. This is when I'm gonna try and focus on gratitude a little more when I'm out running. Because I know that when I can't run, when I'm injured, and I know that there is another injury in my future, it's pretty much guaranteed that during that injury, when I am sitting here moaning to you guys on the camera about how I wish I could run and the other stuff that I'm doing, I will wish the entire time that I were out running. So use that, use whatever you've got to be grateful for the movement that your body can do. So my friends, I do wanna hear from you. I wanna know which of those hacks you actually use on a regular basis, which of those hacks you might use moving forward. And with that, I had a pretty good week of running, a pretty heavy week of running actually. Started off on Monday with 11.2 miles, pretty easy, but I did go and run on some trails. I actually ran on trails for most of the run, so that was a lot of fun. And Tuesday, Tuesday was my first workout day of the week. I knocked out a total of 10.3 miles, and the first two miles were my warm up. Then I did six one mile intervals with 400 meters recovery in between. Now, the workout I was following actually called for 800 meters recovery in between, but I wanted to do the workout and I didn't have enough time to squeeze in the 800 meter recovery, so I shrunk it down to 400 meters. Then I cooled down for a mile, and that was actually a pretty good workout. I felt good after that one. Wednesday was 7.6 miles, very easy. Just going out there, turning over the legs, hoping to feel better for Thursday because Thursday was another workout day, and I knocked out a total of 10.4 miles. I did two miles to warm up. By the way, a two mile warm up is kind of like standard for me now. I've got like a little two mile course that I usually do, and then I know where I'm going to start my workout. Then I did eight miles at tempo pace, and the tempo pace for this run was right around marathon effort. I was doing this tempo run by power. So it was right around my tempo pace, which is what Stride suggests that I should be able to run a marathon in. Now for the last year or so, I have been following the Hansen's marathon method and they suggest that a tempo run is run at marathon pace. And then again, I was punching the clock to get to work. I only did a 0.4 mile cool down, which wasn't a lot, but I did walk around right after that. So I'm probably all right. Friday was 7.5 miles, very easy. And then on Saturday, I did a long run. I knocked out a total of 21 miles and I did run over to Nathan Benison Park, which most of you are gonna have no idea what that is, but it's a park near my house. And I met up with a local running group and we ran 13 together. And with my to the park and back from the park, it equaled 21 miles. So all in all, I had a pretty good week of running. Pretty happy with it. My legs are a bit sore, but that's all right. That's to be expected. And Sunday was my day off. I don't usually take Sundays off, but I did have to schedule Sunday off this week as I will next week, just to fit in with all of life's schedules. You know what I'm saying? And that week of running brought my week's total to 70.42 miles, which is about 113.3 kilometers. So pretty good week. Definitely on the higher end of what I like to do, but next week is going to be considerably lower. So it's all good. Guys, thanks for staying all the way to the end of this video. Oh, hey, if you have made it to the end of this video, first of all, thank you. Second of all, we were talking about sort of running hacks. So why don't you put the saw emoji in the comments so I know that you have made it all the way to the end of this video. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.